Hey everybody, how are you doing today? I am in my art classroom today. I stopped by to pick some things up and thought it might be nice to do my intros from here this week. I love that I have these whiteboards in my art classroom because I can put important things on there and I won't forget to tell you. So today, we're gonna be doing a picture of a snake and you're gonna need a piece of paper and a pencil to draw the snake and the patterns that we're gonna put on the snake. We're gonna use patterns to make our artwork more interesting and more fun for the viewers who are looking at it. We're also gonna be incorporating a focal point in our artwork. For us, that's gonna be the head of the snake. And we want our audience to be attracted to the head of the snake and to notice it by making it stand out. That's what a focal point is. It's when you take something that's in your artwork, one part, and you draw the attention of the audience to that part. And we're gonna do that by using lines, shapes, and colors to make it stand out. So go ahead and grab some colors when you're getting your paper and your pencil. And when you come back, we'll be ready to start drawing. The focal point for our drawing today is the snake's head. That's the part we want people to look at. So I have to decide where do I want the audience to look first in my picture. So I'm thinking close to the middle so that they're looking at the whole picture, but maybe off to the side a little bit so that it's not directly in the center. Directly in the center could work though. So I'm just gonna put a basic shape for my snake's head. You can see it's round, but it's a little bit wider on the, the, end, the top where it connects to the body and it's a little bit thinner at the bottom. That's where the nostrils are gonna go. That's where the eyes are gonna go. And that's where the tongue is gonna go. All right, so this is the focal point of our picture. We're gonna have to figure out how to make the audience see that first. And then the pattern for our picture is the actual body of the snake. So you can be creative with that and make it wiggle around the paper however you would like. And you noticed I'm not drawing the whole side and then drawing the other side. So I draw a little bit of this side and then I draw a little bit of this side to catch up. And then I go back and draw a little bit more of this side. And then I draw a little bit of this side to catch up. And I can make this snake as long as I want. Remember, I'm thinking of the whole picture though. So I shouldn't stop until I feel like the snake's body has done a good job of making the picture look interesting. I feel like I'm going to stop right there. Nope, I'm going to give it one last little curl. And that's pretty much what my snake is going to look like. And you can see I used the body to guide the audience around the picture so that they're not just looking at it and walking away. We wanna keep the audience looking and seeing all the details that are gonna go into this picture. All right, so now I'm gonna work on the background. There could be rocks. Maybe I'll have a rock go off the edge of the paper. What else could be on the ground? There might be some grass, maybe there's some little vines or twigs. There's a little dried up leaf on the ground. Here's gonna be another leaf. Maybe over here, put a little acorn that fell on the ground. Now my composition is done. Composition is the way that I organized everything in the paper. And from looking at it, I'm pretty happy with it. I kind of feel this side is a little empty. So to make my composition better, I might want to address these empty areas.
If you look at a picture of a snake, you can find lots of interesting patterns. But part of the fun of this is that we're going to create a pattern. So that's what's going to make this artwork a little bit more unique. And it's also going to make it yours. So everything at this point in this pattern is something that you came up with yourself. It could be as fun and crazy and silly as you want it to be. Um, one thing I'm going to start with is stripes because lots of snakes have stripes. And then I'm going to build from there. So I'm going to go ahead and add some stripes. There's my first pass. It looks pretty realistic right now. Um, one of the things I love about doing patterns, and especially in this strategy that I'm using, is I start with a more basic pattern, and I allow myself the chance to go back and add more. And when I look at it, I can go back and add more based on what I've added to begin with. So I'm kind of been thinking while I was drawing those stripes of drawing this other kind of idea. So I'm going to put one of these in each one and I'm purposely putting it off center so this one's in the center but then I push it a little bit to the edges because uh, you know a snake is kind of wiggly so it's not perfectly flat the patterns aren't going to be perfectly straight up and down where we see it exactly the same because the body might be tilted to the left or the right as he slithers around All right, so that's pass number two. I added another part to the pattern, and then I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna add another part, and then another part, until I feel like the pattern is finished. So I made one more pass. You can see I added this almost like a sun pattern over the entire snake by adding these lines in each section. Obviously, this is not a snake that's that lives in real life. I made this pattern up completely out of my imagination, and I'm gonna push the pattern even further by the colors I choose to color it. But remember, the, the idea is to draw attention to the head, so I'm probably gonna have to choose my colors wisely to make those eyes really pop out and really draw our attention to them. And I'm gonna purposely choose colors that are a little bit duller or darker for the rest of the picture, just to make sure that the eyes are pulling all of the attention right to the head. Now, on top of the pattern that I drew on the snake, I also incorporated a color pattern by choosing a small group of colors, green, orange, and red, and alternating those colors throughout the entire snake. I also dulled and darkened the pattern 
so that while it's still interesting and it attracts some of our attention, by far the most noticeable part of the drawing are the eyes. They are the only part of the picture that is both colorful and bright, hopefully drawing our attention right to them. So I hope you had fun with this snake drawing. I hope you were able to draw our attention to your focal point, and I hope you had fun creating your own interesting, colorful pattern to decorate the snake. If you like this video, check out some of the other ones, and I will see you next time. Bye.